So today we're going to be looking at what we're going to call violations of the octet rule. And let's remember that in simple terms, the octet rule means that every atom involved in a Lewis structure is striving to have eight electrons in the outermost energy level. But just like any rule, there's always exceptions. So today we're going to be looking at a couple of those, and some of them are pretty simple. Let's take an example, a molecule like uh, boron triiodide, looks like this. And boron, as we know, is in group, uh, according to our new numbering system, it's in group three of the periodic table. And that means that it has three electrons in its outermost energy level. And if we were going to look at boron's electron dot notation, a real simple way of drawing it would look like this. So how does this work? So just like any uh, Lewis structure, we're going to start by adding up all the electrons that we have in the valence. And boron has three. There are three iodines, and they each have seven. And that's 21. So here we have a total of 24 electrons. Let's do our skeleton. And that means that we're going to put our boron in the middle, since... Uh, it's the fewest one that we have. And we'll draw our skeleton by bonding an iodine to each side of the boron like this. And that means that we've used up six electrons in the bonding, and that means that we have 18 left. And so finally what we'll do is we'll take those 18 electrons and we'll fill the valences of every atom that's involved in this molecule and that uses up all 18. In a case like this we would be concerned because our iodines all have access to 8. I mean this one's got 8 and this one's got 8 and this one's got 8. And we'd be looking at the boron going well this one only has access to 6 but Sometimes that's how it works. And so in a case like this, I'm going to indicate in a molecule that violates the octet rule with an asterisk because this one, boron triiodide, for whatever reason, boron is perfectly fine with just having six electrons in the outermost energy level. And that means that this one is fine. This is how it works. All right? Sometimes it's just going to be a situation like this where the octet rule isn't satisfied, and we just deal with it. All right? Let's try another one. And we're going to look at one called... Here's one. This is called phosphorus pentafluoride. And we'll use our typical model. Where we'll say the phosphorus has got five electrons in the valence. We have five fluorines, and they each have seven, and that's a total of 35. And so all together, we have 40 electrons in the valence. So as usual, we put the one that we have the fewest of in the middle, and we'll skeleton by putting a phosphorus, I'm sorry, a fluorine skeletoned to this phosphorus and we're using up uh, two electrons in each bonding. So we've used up, since we've got five fluorines and each of them is sharing two, we've used up 10 electrons in the bonding and that means that we have 30 electrons remaining. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill the octet rule of all the surrounding atoms and we'll put any extras around the center. So we'll put six around this fluorine six around this one. I think you guys get the hang of it. And finally six around this fluorine. Each of these fluorines has eight 
and the phosphorus in this case has 10. And this is one of those violations of the octet rule. And this one is perfectly fine. Let's try one more. Okay, this one's really weird. This is an ion called triiodide. And as you can see from this notation, it's got one extra electron. So let's do like we've been doing. We'll total up all our valence electrons, and that means that we've got three iodines, and they each have seven for a total of 21, plus one extra. And that's this guy, and so that's 22. So how are we going to do this? Well, let's do our skeleton. And we have three iodines, so it doesn't really matter where we put them. So I'm simply going to skeleton my molecule like this. And we have used up four electrons in the bonding. And so that means that we have a total of 18 left. So what we typically do is we'll put the remaining electrons around the outermost atoms so that they have the valence. Well, we've used six around this one, and it has eight, and six around this one, and it has eight. But we have 18 total, and that means that we have six left. So what do we do with those? Whenever we are talking about violations of the octet rule, any remaining electrons... We'll put those around the central atom. And so this is how this is going to look. And it's going to look weird, but it'll make more sense in about a week. So we have six electrons remaining, and we're simply going to put them around this iodine. Let's remember that anytime we have these electron pairs around the central atom, we want to be paying attention to those. They're called lone pairs. We don't really care about these so much, but we definitely do around the central one. And this looks weird now. It's going to continue to look weird, but it'll make more sense in about a week. All right, so anytime that we see an asterisk next to one of these, it means it's a violation of the octet rule, and that means that we throw some of the rules we've been looking at out the window. All right.